Tiger. Technically, this is a pure country home hangout, but you are yeah. in your car right now. <laughs> I'm what? You're I'm in, in my car. car. Yes. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm at home in Nanaimo. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and you've been doing so many live shows on your socials, your quarantine yeah. show. Um, have you been enjoying it? I love doing it. I love being a host of something. Um, and I think it's just, it's, the point was to entertain people and just keep them, uh, keep them entertained while they're cooped up, you know, and give them something from my personal life, but also, uh, have them escape from their days, their regular days that they've had to live inside of their homes in whatever way that's been. So. Yeah. And it's nice to, I mean, right now it's so crazy to think like, you know, a lot of your fans are like, yeah. man, I'm going through exactly what Aaron Prochette is going through right now. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of like hang out on social media in a way different way than we, you know, used it before. Yeah. You know, it's really given a um, sort of a, a real aspect to who I am, I guess. And a lot of people get to see the sense of humor that I think I have. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it already, but yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but also put the real, uh, the real side of how I live um, uh, in perspective. And it's, it's pretty cool to be able to do that. And I've, I've, I've always been sort of somebody who's wanted to keep it as real as possible. So this gave me the opportunity when everybody was really paying attention in their homes and having no choice but to be locked up, I guess, <laughs> you know. Um, and uh, I've really been able to, um, uh, to enjoy that aspect of it myself. And connecting with the audience is what I've always wanted to do. Yeah, for sure. Do you think you'll do more live stuff on social media going forward, even when this is all over? Yeah, absolutely. I think so. Uh, I'm, I'm already thinking about going to two days a, a week instead of five, and I was doing seven. Um, <clears throat> not unlike James Barker, he was doing tons in a row as well. Oh, yeah. And uh, it just became, it became really tiring for sure to know that you have to be on, on the air at that specific time every day. Um, so I went to five days and now it's like, well, you know what? life is sort of getting back to a little bit of normal. So days are getting longer. So at six o'clock my time, it's pretty light out and it's still light out for another four hours past that right now. Yeah. So I thought, well, I'm going to cut them down a little bit, but I'm still going to, I'm still planning on doing it two days a week, probably like Sundays and Wednesdays nice. and just uh, have guests on because it's really fun to be able to do that kind of thing. And like you're doing right now, you have a guest on and talk about their lives and how the, you know, the uh, pandemic was for them spending time at home, blah, blah, blah. And, and then their regular lives, how they had to shut those down and what the plan is for coming up. So I think people still need that information. Yeah. So I'm going to still do the show probably two days a week. Cool. I love that. Yeah. I love checking them out. I think that it's awesome. And it, um, you have nice. some cool guests too, because they're, you know, people that are in your life that we probably wouldn't have been introduced to or met um, or known as well as we get to. But with you doing this, it's like, oh, we get to see so many different people that are in Aaron's life too, which I think is cool. And I think at first I went with all the Canadian country artists, um, you know, with obviously Derek and Tim and Jess and Gord and Aaron Goodman. But uh, I kind of tapped into my little bit of my, my Rolodex of, of friends that I've met over the years, uh, whether they're, you know, uh, athletes, you know, yeah. professional athletes to actors to directors of movies and TV shows. And uh, I just sort of went into that realm and went, you know, I, I should be talking to everybody and give my audience uh, a taste of the people I know, but not just that, but from different uh, aspects of entertainment and how their lives are shut down too. So yeah, it, it, today's, today's guest, for example, is Jake Bertanen from the Canucks. Um, and we're still looking at uh, Jason Priestley. He's, he wants to come on the show, but he's quite busy. So yeah, 90210 and oh, cool. obviously from Riverdale. Uh, he was on Riverdale, I believe, anyways. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I've had actors on and all kinds of people. And I just love it. I, I love doing that and giving my country fans a taste of uh, the people that I, I know and, and a piece of their lives and something different. Yeah, for sure. I think it's super cool. Um, cool. So fans also get a little treat from Mr. Aaron Prochet because even though you've been doing the live stuff, you also have a brand new song that is out on this day that we are releasing this interview. So new song. Um, I listened to it. It's so good. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, it's already stuck in my head. I'm like, it's catchy. It's fun. I feel oh, good. like it's a fresh sound for you, but I feel like it also 
has that like bit of you that we all have come to know and love. So like you're not completely losing yourself by like adapting and growing and everything like that. It's like, it's still got that Aaron Pritchett touch to it. So it's called Never See Me Like This. Yep. And yeah, it's one of those, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's um, just one of those songs that I love. Did you write it or did you get it pitched to you? Sadly, no, I did not write it, but I haven't been doing a lot of songs that I've written. I haven't been releasing to radio a lot of songs that I've written, releasing to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's only because of the fact that it's a great song. Uh, Better When I Do, another one of those songs. It's just a great song. I didn't write it. Worth a shot. Um, you know, uh, Dirt Road Enum. I didn't write any of these songs, but I, I just went with the best song that I found to be what is a great representation of me as an artist that still keeps that brand rolling, um, but also is a, a slightly different from what I've been doing as well. So it's it's got a bit of everything. And this one in particular, it's funny, it's called I've Never Seen Me Like This. I've actually never seen me this excited to release a single like I am with this one. And uh, you know, ask, there's always- Are you that person in that song right now? <laughs> do you feel that way? <laughs> I really do feel like that, yeah. And the premise of the song is never see me like this. So in this particular situation, the guy is saying, I've never seen me like this, uh, you know, so head over heels for someone. And I'll do pretty much anything that, you know, you want me to because I, I you know, I'll, I'll, because I'm, you know, so enamored by this person that they're falling for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I've never been so excited to release a single. And it's, it's not that it's been a long time since I've released one. Um, I'll be honest, you know, I'm turning 50 in August. 50. Ugh. Uh, well, but it, it, party in real life we'll have to have a virtual drink together <laughs> yes please so uh for me to still be doing this as a career and still have um uh, you know even moderate success at radio at this point almost 30 years into this uh this sorry i had to turn my alarm off uh, okay. 30 years into my uh, <laughs> the real part of life while we're doing these interviews uh, but yeah uh the 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 thing is is that after all these years still releasing music and i'm just really super thankful that i get to do it and still entertain people and they want to hear it so uh i'm super excited for this single to come out well i'm super thankful that you are still doing it because i would be really sad if you weren't i would have oh, to thanks give you some crap about it <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited about this one i feel like fans are gonna like this song it's it's great fresh. it's also you know, I've said this to a lot of people that have been releasing music right now. Um, I think that's the kind of music that people want to hear. It's lighthearted. It's fun. It still hits, you know, a certain place for people, I'm sure. But it's like, you know, I think we have enough sadness in the world that something that puts a smile on your face is a good thing. <laughs> well, good. And that's the whole point is, you know, if people go, oh, when are you going to release a, a slower song? I eventually will. But in the meantime, I love just releasing these upbeat, fun songs. Yeah. Um, you know, where people are going to be singing along to it instantly. You want, it, it catches your ear and you instantly want to just sing along to it. And that's, you know, never seen me like this. It's definitely got that, uh, it's definitely got that catchy sort of um, tune to it. And I, I don't see getting out of that for quite a while, especially what we've gone through with the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, you want uplifting and fun and, and something that uh, people are going to be like, all right, this is a great song to have while we're all gathered together. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree. Um, okay. We are going to do a little icebreaker questions with you. Okay. Fun and f I like finding out new stuff about you. So um, first one is, okay. If you could choose your age forever, what age would you choose to stay? 30. 30. Okay. Why 30. Was that a great year? 30 was a really great transition year for me. Okay. Um, I remember my 30th birthday and at first I was like, man, I'm going to be 30. Ugh. And then realized, wait a second, this is, this feels great. This feels great. I feel like I've turned a maturity corner, although I, <laughs> yet to be proven. <laughs> but I really did. I felt like, okay, I'm 30, you know, and then I really had my life together um, and things were moving in a really great direction. My career started taking off at that point. Um, my personal life, I had, you know, two kids at the time, three now that I know of, and, uh, things were really starting. To <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but I, 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 I felt like my life was really starting to round out and 30 yeah. was the, the age for me. 
Nice. Well, you haven't hit 50 yet, so I might have to ask no. after that. You might change your mind. You never know. Okay. Please do ask me after August 2nd. Okay, I will. <laughs> um, okay. If you had to delete all but three apps on your phone, which three would you keep? Uh, well, uh, probably you WhatsApp. Because you have to do your shows. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say Instagram, but I think that's kind of an obvious one. So Instagram for sure. Yeah. Um, but WhatsApp, because it's my way of connecting with people all around the world mm -hmm. for nothing and <laughs> for free. Uh, and I think I would also have to have my iTunes um, if it was still accessible then right. I'd have to have my iTunes because I got to get, got to have my music. Absolutely. I totally agree. Um, okay. If you had to eat one meal every day for the rest of your life, what would it be? <laughs> one meal for the rest of my life. That's a tough oh, one. Oh man, that is a tough one because I have so many great meals that I've had, especially lately eating at home a lot more. I'm tough. Um, my friend Sarah makes the best meals and I, it's hard to choose which ones that she makes for us. Uh, I would say, who? She makes a really mean pizza. <laughs> pizza's a great choice. Going with Other pizza than, for the rest of your life is not a bad choice. The toppings are amazing, um, but we just have to work on the crust. <laughs> You'll just have to work out a little extra. Yeah, I think I honestly, I think I could eat, uh, I think I could eat pizza pretty much every day. You think so? I shouldn't, but I do. Yes, Stephen 100% does and could forever. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> oh, like, so it. pizza for dinner? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, what about tomorrow night? Yeah. So, for pizza? Night, next night. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, this is a good one then. What's the weirdest yeah. food you've ever eaten? Weirdest food I've ever eaten? Hmm. Um, that's a really tough one. Another, another one of those things that strangest food. I'm oh. so picky. I've never eaten anything strange because I really Oh, you know what? Tofurkey. Oh, okay. Was Have it you, do you know what tofurkey is? I it's tofu turkey. No, I never eat it. It was it was horrible. <laughs> um and I'm not I'm not a fan of um of uh stuffing. Okay. So I am. <laughs> it, it reminded me of stuffing and it was just okay. bleh. so tofurkey. Tofurkey. <laughs> okay. Um, last one. Hmm. Okay. Which actor would you want to play you in a movie? Oh, uh, we were just talking about actors that I've been told I look like, and some of them are kind of strange. Like Mel Gibson, I've heard. Yeah. Um, I that. Young Mel Gibson, which I, I got, but I just don't have the mullet. I'd love to have that mullet from. <laughs> you uh, need from time. Try, try to grow it. <laughs> I could. I could. I really could. Um, if I was to have an actor play me, that's, uh, it, it depends on what age I was at, but uh, I think Ray Liotta would be so, because he'd have, he doesn't really look so much like me, but if I could be like a, you know, an older me, if I had, if it was a movie where it's like me in the future, I think Ray Liotta, because he's got a real attitude about him too. That's a great choice. I love Ray Liotta. Okay, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, yeah. That's, that's my that's guy. Really I feel like that would totally be doable. I think he he would play you well. I think. Yeah, and maybe a young me would be uh, Ryan Reynolds, probably, because we look so much alike. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the humor is there, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a great choice. Good choices. Thanks. All right, well, thank, thank you for doing this. Um, it was so nice to get to hear your voice and see your face. And Thank um, you. You too. I can't wait to see you in real life and hear you play some of your new music for everybody. Yeah. So, I know we're so we're so excited to get out and play. I mean, the band is just itching to play, and you know, given the restrictions that we're gonna have, it's fine. We'll find ways to come to all of your your listeners, and yeah. uh, we want to be able to play for them. I love that. Well, stay safe, and hopefully, we'll see you, you too. rather than later. And yes. Have a good rest of your day.